Please pray with me. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, welcome back to another week of the story and this theme, the whole family, the whole Bible, the whole year. Um, it's been good to launch this, and now we're already into the third week and uh, into the story of Joseph. And uh, I hope that you will pick up one of these. Um, I took my cover off already because whenever I have a cover, it always gets ripped and stuff. So anyway, um, the story, and it's a great companion to obviously the full account of God's Word, but it is the Bible. And I encourage you to go through that in a unique way, as I've mentioned already. Um, a couple of things about today I just wanted to highlight as we think about this theme uh, we're talking about Joseph, and these are, if you want to even, if you have your Bible with you, um, I'm going to re refer to a few verses within those chapters, those 13, 14 chapters of 37 through 50. Uh, Joseph from slavery to deputy Pharaoh, and uh, a couple of things just in, in review, and maybe just introducing this theme as well. Uh, we talk about the upper story and the lower story, and think about it in this way. The upper story is God's story where he fulfills his purpose. That's all about God, right? God's at work, God's moving, and he is doing his, in his way, in his time, he is fulfilling his purposes and plans in our, in our lives and in the world. And the lower story, you could say, is our story, right? It's, it's on earth, right? Stuff of earth, stuff of life, real challenges, real details, re real things that we walk in life together, supporting one another, encouraging one another, praying for one another. And yes, we have setbacks and there's victories and setbacks and all that life brings. But ultimately, we know, trust God is at work, right? God has the final say. God's word prevails, and we pray that our hearts and lives and all, minds will always return to him, no matter what. So think about those two themes, the upper story and the lower story. And um, uh, I, I think as we look through all these stories that we're highlighting in, in God's word over this year, it kind of becomes like a puzzle piece. If you remember my little puzzle I had out last week, the little jigsaw puzzle. It's like, yeah, we see parts of the puzzle, but this is one way of getting that whole puzzle. And we see the big picture, and we can put that whole puzzle piece together that sometimes is kind of daunting. How do you get through God's word? Well, I hope this is a way that we can do this together. Um, and uh, now we're looking at the story uh, of Joseph, uh, how these two storylines intertwine, right? The upper story and the lower story. And I love that main verse, the Lord was with Joseph. You may remember last week and that focus on Abraham and Sarah and how God was with them and his plan to establish a nation was going to prevail no matter what, no matter their failings, no matter what other people might do. And they were called back again to trust again and again and God provided all right, just like Mike said, just enough, just in time. And the Lord here, as we look to Joseph, the Lord was with Joseph. And that's one of the, those, uh, those key verses that we're going to look at in the midst of this, uh, this story that we'll just have a chance to glimpse at and look through together uh, this morning. But go deeper. Go deeper in your community groups and your study at home. And, and uh, uh, I pray that God's word will just continue to come alive throughout this week. So a couple things of an overview, and if you've been in the Word before, you'll know this. If you haven't gone through the Bible, you may not, so I'm just going to give a quick overview, a reminder of what happens in these, uh, in these key chapters of Genesis 37 through 50. Um, I talked about it with the kids a moment ago, and we remember Genesis 37, he is sold into slavery by his jealous brothers. Can you imagine a more horrible thing other than outright killing him, which the brothers wanted to do. If you may remember, some of them wanted to do that. One stepped in, no, 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 no. Okay, well, let's just throw him in a pit and sell him to some traitors, right? And, uh, oh, that's so kind of them and unthoughtful of them. But, uh, you know, a couple of things looking back before all that happened. Um, think about Joseph and the way he was, I wouldn't say he was asking for it, but if you're the little brother that's going around bragging to his older brothers, hey guys, as you look in 37, uh, verse 5, oh, I had this dream. Uh, there's this grain, and suddenly my sheaf of grain rose up, and uh, 
all yours, the other grains bow down to it. That's you guys. You're bowing down to me pretty soon. Isn't that great? Hmm, can you see those brothers gritting their teeth and going, oh, this favored son, what in the world are you talking about? And, uh, and Joseph just doesn't get it because just a couple of verses later um, in verse 9, oh, okay, hey, guys, listen, I had another dream. Uh, this time the sun and the moon and the stars were all bowing down to me. Isn't that great? Aren't you happy for me? Oh, well, I have already told you, as you know, probably the rest of the story. And uh, it's just incredible what happens here and how God's plan and man's plans, the brother's plans, how's this all going to work out? Ah, and, you know, bragging, jealousy, it's just the human bad condition that you see around us, right? And how do you, how's God going to ever work through this? And then, of course, uh, as we see further down, um, in Genesis 39 through 41, seems like actually things are kind of working out, right? And he gets placed uh, in Egypt, and he's uh, put in charge of some stuff, and, and uh, oh, it's kind of working out, and he's okay. And then there's this uh, false accusation against him by Potiphar's wife, and everything changes. And I, 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 I visited prisons and even in our kind of more sterile era that we live in now in our country where you think prisoners have rights and they're taken care of, man, whenever I've entered into a prison to visit with someone, it's heavy. And whether you have, I don't know, whether you've ever been in jail or whether you visited someone in jail, it is just, there's just a spirit of darkness and heaviness that I don't know how people overcome that. And I'd like you to watch this short little clip that kind of illustrates this, this Bible passage and from someone actually who's in prison. Go ahead and if you could advance that. Thank you. This is your story. This is my story. But most of all, this is the greatest story ever told. This is God's story. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. The good news that we just heard that prisoner speak as he was reading the story, that passage, right, was that even though that hardest, darkest time, the Lord was with Joseph. And even the prison warden in charge of that whole thing saw something. Well, God helped him see something in Joseph, I believe, that even lifted him out of that heavy, dark place and promoted him into being in charge of that that prison and eventually as we see him taking uh, again God's leading and being even promoted to deputy Pharaoh second only to Pharaoh himself as we look through the passages of Genesis 41 and the continuing verses from 42 to 50. I want you to think about this with me today. Um, he eventually became reunited with his brothers and he had the I'd say the presence of God in him enough to even forgive those horrible things that the brothers did to him. 
And uh, as I think about these words, I want to read a passage from Genesis 45. I'm going to look at this passage uh, from 45, 3 through 8. But I want you to think about this before I read that. Right? Joseph doesn't take revenge on his brothers. Why? Why would that be? And I believe as I think about these themes of the upper and lower story, Joseph was captured by the upper story. God is working his purpose within the ups and downs in Joseph's human lower story. To have that vision, isn't that God's desire for us too? To see the, see the big picture. Look at what God, God says, look at what I'm doing. Trust me. Even in these times that you're in prison or anything that you might feel is like a prison cell or a definite place that you don't want to be or a struggle you're going through, look at what God has done and what God will do. His, his bigger picture story, his greater things, he wants to do and use. Uh, this, even this horrible situation, God is going to bring you through. So I'm going to read uh, just a couple glimpses into the, just the heart of Joseph um, in, uh, in chapter 45 as uh, Joseph finally reveals himself to his brothers. And there's a lot of back and forth between the brothers and all that's going on. And you can read that more in the story or read it in your Bible. But eventually, finally, Joseph said to his brothers in Genesis 45, verse 3, he says, Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. He tells them they didn't recognize. They didn't, he's this leader in Egypt. His brother was dead, for all they knew, or traded to who knows where. He says to them, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? And the brothers couldn't answer. They're, it says they're terrified at his presence. <laughs> he, he literally had the power of life and death over them. And Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. I'm your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. But he says this. He says, don't be distressed and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me here. It was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. And he continues to reference that. This is what God's doing. In verse 7, God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. It was not you who sent me here, but God. And that whole theme that Joseph carries, one of my favorite passages in Scripture, is also from Genesis 50, later in a few chapters later, where he's continuing to speak with his brothers, and they're still wondering, if this is Joseph for real? Is he really meaning this, or is he going to, like, you know, really take it out on us, right? They're still kind of worried. And, and then he, he, Joseph says in Genesis 50, verse 20, Genesis 50, verse 20, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. God is at work. God is continuing, continually about fulfilling his good and great purposes. And we return back to one of the most familiar and also challenging verses in Scripture from Romans 8.28. And I'd like us to read it. It's the italicized verse there right at the bottom. Let's read that verse together. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. And wherever you are in this story of your life, right? Like all, we're all involved in this lower story and trying to continue to say, God, reveal to me what you would have me see today. Reveal to me in your word. Reveal to me through this trial. And if you're in that like 22-year struggle that Joseph was in, right, where he couldn't see the end, even like Abraham last week, right? He couldn't see what God was doing, but he continued to go back to trust. And uh, God promises he will work it out for his good. It may not be in the next five minutes or I don't know how long, but God says, trust me. So I, I want you to leave with this thought as we, again, get into this week. Uh, knowing God's storyline is unfolding even in bleak and confusing times allows us to live freely and even being able to forgive those who sin against us. And I love, I'm challenged by this, and I am, it's important to lay it out there, but who do you need to forgive today? Right. Is there somebody on your heart that you're saying, yeah, Pastor John, I know, I know what I need to do. I know they don't deserve it. I need to give it to you. 
Is there someone on your heart? Let God work through it. Be a part of that upper story, leaving it with God. And remember, as Joseph was called to remember and to see, the Lord is with you, Joseph. And remember, church, the Lord is with you. In a moment, we're going to celebrate communion because we see in Jesus the ultimate promise of God's presence. God with us was in Jesus, Emmanuel, right? God with us, and God is here. God is with us. Right here as we celebrate this gift of communion, Jesus comes in a powerful way and says, I love you, I forgive you. Jesus says, I died for you that you might be brought back to God's plan and God's way, God's purpose, and God's love, God's upper story, right? Jesus even coming to our lower story level. Isn't that an amazing God who would do whatever he can, whatever lengths he'll go to? I pray that we can allow ourselves again then, knowing who God says we are, to freely live for him and even to forgive Uh, As Jesus said on the cross, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Give it to God. Give even as God freely gave uh, to us. I pray that you'll be encouraged and blessed even in in reading or rereading through this and even as we look to uh, next week. uh, But just keep this thought in mind as you go through the word. How can God use you? What does God want to do with your life? Do you see that upper story? Willing to be used by God. Some say, are you all in to that promise that God says, I redeemed you and I want to use you to continue to bless. These are the, the next themes that we're going to look at as I encourage you to, to look forward into uh, what God will do as we look at uh, this old exodus and deliverance and the deliverance of the people of Israel and Moses But let's pray as we close uh, this message time as we go up for communion. And I'd like you to affirm another verse of scripture. I think you can see that okay. Let's read it together from Isaiah 41. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Let's pray together. Oh, Lord, we're thankful for your holy presence here with us today. God, thankful that as you were with Joseph, God, you are with us by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit right here as we come in this community of faith together, uh, challenged and encouraged by one another. As we come to celebrate communion, you are here, Jesus, come. You're present with us in the bread and the wine that's broken. Uh, your, your body was broken. Your blood was poured out so that we can live. And we need your life to, to fill us, God, so that we might live for you, that we might forgive as you have forgiven us, that we might live and see your plan, your greater plan of, of what you're doing in our lives and in the world. Father, as we pray, we lift up those uh, going through any times of struggle right now. Lord, we lift up Uh, those healing from injury or illness. So we lift up Madge Sempert and thankful for her back healing after surgery. Lord, we lift up our our sister Dana, Dana Eaton, and we just lift up Dana's family as they have been mourning the loss of her father, Lee, and to just comfort and bless Dana. Thankful for, again, ways we can support one another, bless their family through this challenging time. And we just commend Lee to you. Thankful, the Lord, that he is in your loving, loving arms and that, uh, that Lord, he is uh, experiencing life with you. So, Lord, we just commend Dana and her family. And, God, we give you thanks. Thank you for just times of seasons of celebration. Thankful for these 68 years of, um, of marriage that Vern and Dar are celebrating. Thankful, God, for your blessing upon families, upon husbands and wives and families, and just continue to uh, bless them, Lord. And, Lord, we lift up... Uh, Again, this the Crepain family for Krista and Grant just married on last Sunday. Bless them in their new life together and continue to keep them in your care and thankful for ways we can just encourage and bless one another through these uh, times and seasons of life. So God, you know uh, all our hearts, our needs, our burdens, and we can come to you freely. And we can just literally come to the cross as we receive your grace and mercy to live for you now as we receive communion and Jesus come to each need, each heart that's burdened, uh, come and guide us and lead us closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to stand with me as we prepare to celebrate Holy Communion.